Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the uh, All-Star Wrestling Review for the 5th of August 1978. And ultimately, uh, I love these 1978, 79, 80 shows that I'm getting to watch for your benefit and for mine as well. Mainly because um, they're so much better than most of the wrestling that's alive today just from the standpoint of... Um, logic and storytelling and character development and simplicity and all sorts of things we do cover the main the the um you know the the product that is today here on the channel as well we've got nearly 1700 audios available but um my preference is always going to be stuff that happened prior to the last at least 20 years if not 25 um because that's where the that's where wrestling lives, and what, in my personal and professional opinion, as someone who was in wrestling for the uh, for a dozen years uh, as a play-by-play -play guy, what we have now is not wrestling; it's it's a facsimile thereof. Anyway, August fifth, nineteen and seventy-eight. Here um, is a. Rather nondescript show uh, hosted by Vince McMahon includes McMahon uh, conducting a ringside interview with Dino Bravo. Bravo is getting a pretty major push. Spirits, Arion, and um, uh, Frank, Frank Williams is here. Obviously, Arion has been managed on and off by various people, including both the Grand Wizard and um, uh, Classy Freddy Blassie at various times. I think just trying to you know find a guy who can... Bring him to his feet and, and get the most out of him. Ariana, of course, uh, retires soon hereafter, so not exactly a you know thing to write home about here. Ariane, though, manages to do a good bit of uh, some some go go around, go behind, and, and and basic stuff there. Not exactly anything that needs to be worried about. Williams kind of gets tied up in arm bars. Punch kick, very basic offense. Arian, as mentioned, Arian retires within a couple of years anyway, so this is near the end of his career. He does a lot of punch kicks, still trying to get something out of him as far as a uh, opportunity to defeat perhaps the uh, um, the champion, the uh, champion, and Bob Backlund on his way out the door. Obviously, that doesn't happen, but. It's here, and that's the idea, anyway. Um, you know, that's that's where they wanted to go with it, I'll put it that way. So, uh, then we go to the WWWF Tag Team Champions, Yucatan Lumberjacks, with Captain Lou Albano defeating Carlos Cruz and Jim Ray 737 when Pierre pins Cruz following a double chop from the Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks, probably uh, one of the most nondescript uh, tag teams in WWF or WWF history or WWE history. Um, real basic match, lots of uh, tie-ups. Attempted things like go-behinds, also tries to choke the man out over the ropes. Captain Lou, probably the best thing about them as a team in the sense of, you know, they're very basic. Arm bars and uh, body slams and the like, and ultimately the the double chop is basically the equivalent of a double clothesline with chop leg motions into the clothesline motions. Take down by the lumberjacks. Lumberjacks in control the majority of the match. The double team leads to the victory for the champions. Champions do not look all that menacing, to be completely honest. Like I said, Captain Lou Albano, probably the most men menacing guy there. Dino Bravo talking about wanting to be a singles competitor and, um, you know, having to be in tip-top shape for the majority of whatever part of his career is here. Then we go to, um, you know, he talks about kind of being powerful, kind of getting his footing about him, wanting to be... Single successful and tag successful and just basically find his way in wrestling in general. Uh, then we go to the back to the ring. Luke Graham with the Grand Wizard defeats Mike uh, Milkop, uh, five fourteen after hitting him with a foreign objects. The idea is 
Luke Graham kind of does the old Memphis thing of kind of uh, hiding, hiding the foreign object throughout. Um, Milltop doesn't do a great deal of uh, deals, you know, things here. Grams are major, going back to the 50s in the New York Territory. Graham tries to back everybody off, including his opponent and the referee. Works his uh, front face lock and a headlock and basic stuff. Takes the man down and Graham is uh, wearing red and black checkered tights and kind of doing his deal. Um, Graham does a lot of punch kick, ends up walking away. From the situation with a victory after using the foreign object, nothing necessarily to write home about, but, you know, getting where he wants to get with that. Then we go into another match. I love the pacing on the show, by the way, in the sense of just match, 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 instead of so many promos that you want to scream, especially when most of the promos in today's era are written in, in a way that can't compel anyone unless you're either partially uh, intoxicated or, um, you know, partially intoxicated or maybe the mindset of an eight-year-old child. I don't imagine that the, uh, the promos in WWE are particularly good. I gotta grab my phone, but we will be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Again, a guy like uh, Baron Mikel Sakuna against Neil Bravo. Probably doesn't sound all that entertaining to people who knew Bravo from later days, but Sakuna, who had been around since the 50s, does bring a decent match out of Bravo here uh, in the 1970s. Uh, send him into the buckle and a, a bunch of bounce arounds there. Sakuna manages to brawl with him. They go s nearly seven and a half minutes. Bravo works the buckle and then gets a reverse chin lock for several minutes not exactly the most uh, high impact match but then again it doesn't need to be uh, drop kick under the chin by Bravo who sends his man out to the floor and eventually Bravo gets a count out victory uh, as it were there and then we go to a um, final match of the day which ends up being um None other than um, Victor Rivera defeating Lu uh, Luis Lugo 320 with a suplex after the bout. Um, Willa Monsoon uh, talks about the recent attitude change of Rivera since his return and the rumors that Freddie Blassie had something to do with it. Uh, obviously, Victor Rivera had been a babyface for a good bit of time. Uh, Monsoon's promo is basically that he has changed and Blassie is to blame. Uh, so, a little bit more heel edge to um, Rivera. Rivera does end up kind of having that aggressive nature to him, and in the end gets the victory as we close the program. We'll be back with more right after this.